The detention room is like a cooling chamber with a metal door. Escape from this room is impossible. Xie Yeni was one of 200 human rights lawyers Chinese authorities rounded up in July 2015. Everything inside is wrapped in soft material. The walls, the table, it's so you can't kill yourself. I didn't see daylight for half a year. A bright light is on 24 hours a day. You don't know if it's day or night. It feels like you've been locked up in hell. You're completely cut off from the world. You don't know anything, and you're terrified. Xie Yeni was called to the administration of his apartment complex. He didn't suspect anything. There, several plainclothes police were waiting. They blindfolded him and shoved him into a car. His wife and children were wondering why he didn't come back. Then, later that day, 20 police officers came to search their apartment. I was absolutely terrified. Nobody told me he'd been detained. The police searched the house but refused to give any information. Forced disappearances have become increasingly common in China. The head of Interpol, a former Canadian diplomat, an exiled writer, a Canadian businessman, an activist and a photographer, a lawyer, Hong Kong booksellers, and a billionaire are just a few of those who disappeared in the last two years. The facilities are often inside military compounds. They are secret, but activists have tried to find some of them. Detainees are not in the judicial system's database. Sieyeni's wife and his mother, herself a lawyer, then did everything to track him down, but without success. She was even more terrified than I was. She kept asking, where have they taken my son? She said Yan Yi might never come back. 22 days after my husband disappeared, she suddenly died. The uncertainty is intentional. Authorities use the sites to extort confessions. Two guards are present around the clock. They register every movement you make. They observe you to find your weak spot and find out what you're most scared of. They don't allow you to change positions when you sleep and they deprive you of your slightest freedoms. You have to ask even if you want to drink water. Or they make you sit on a wooden block for 16 hours until you can't feel your limbs anymore. You can't even go to the toilet because your nerves seem dead. The whole detention facility is designed for you to understand that you are under their control. If they want you to live, you will live. If they want you to die, you will die. If they want you to suffer, you will suffer. If they want you to be happy, you'll be happy. Sieyeni's whereabouts were unknown for six months. Later, he was transferred to a regular detention center and jailed for two years. After his release, he wrote a detailed account of the secret detention. Xie Yeni even had his license to practice law revoked, but he is still refusing to keep quiet. The report by DW's Matthias Berlinger, who now joins me from Beijing. Matthias, firstly, how widespread is this practice of forced disappearances in China? 
it is becoming increasingly common that is within the fa last five years. Of course, a lot of the things that happen in these secret detentions have been common in China. Torture, mental torture, isolation, extortion of confessions, all this has been happening before. But this systematic and comprehensive uh, uh, use of disappearances is something we have seen during the Xi Jinping era. Uh, it, it, it has happened to uh, lawyers, to dissidents, it has happened to foreign nationals. It all seems to be uh, modeled on the, the treatment of corrupt officials. The Communist Party usually takes these people in its control, in its own control. After they are expelled from the party, they are handed over to the judicial system. So this is uh, what we see recently. So when someone is disappeared or vanishes, what recourse does the family have? Who do they turn to for help? Well, you can imagine what they do is they try to find any pos information possible. They go to uh, state organs, prosecutors, uh, detention centers, legal criminal detention centers, police stations, but they do not get any information. So the only thing that they can do is to make this public, to hope that the international press, that diplomats uh, become aware of the case and keep raising this case. This might not really protect their relative, uh, or, or release their relative, but it might offer some protection from the worst abuses. This, that's at least what they hope. And Matisse, is China facing any international pressure over these disappearances? China is facing pressure on a lot of individual cases. The ones mentioned in the report, they were all reported by the international press. They have been raised at, uh, by international uh, uh, diplomats. Uh, diplomats appear when they hear of uh, human rights uh, uh, defendants being put in court. They appear in front of the court. They're never admitted. and But they stand there along with journalists to show that they care. They keep contact with the relatives. All this is happening, but no international organization or no country has found a means to convince the Chinese government of ending these abuses of human rights. Right. Matthias Berlinger in Beijing, thank you for your excellent reporting and your insights into this practice of enforced disappearances.